Well, hello everyone. My name is Matthew Wallace. I am a NASA Education Specialist at NASA's Johnson Space Center. And today I'm going to show you how to build your very own spectrometer using the NASA Microsoft Hacking STEM lesson. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you just really quick. And we're going to check out all the cool things that there is to know about Microsoft Hacking STEM. So you'll see eight lesson plans here. Uh, these are the eight lesson plans that we at NASA work with Microsoft to develop. Um, they run the gamut of looking at crew footwear to um, radiation, electromagnetic spectrum, uh, understanding heat shield and ideal gas law. You can even have students build their own space station in Minecraft. Um, there's a virtual reality component as well, as well as a um, sustainability and um, climate change lesson plan that looks at different colors and patterns based off satellite data uh, of images, aerial satellite images of, uh, of Earth. The list goes on and on. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to just introduce Hacking STEM briefly, and then I'm going to walk through what it's like to build one of these lessons. Like I said, we're going to build a spectrometer today. So um, like I said, Hacking STEM is a really unique um, the partnership that we had here at NASA, what they've done in the past with Hacking STEM is that they've um, taken some sort of sensor and they've had students build something and then the sensor collects the data, goes through Arduino or Microbit or some sort of microcontroller and then goes into Microsoft Excel so they can visualize the data on the screen. Um, an example here, you see this um, uh, this basically it's a brain that they built and there's little pressure sensors on the outside and you uh, have some sort of external force that hits the brain and then you can see where's the data coming from and it shows up on the screen what's happening when that brain gets hit. But with the NASA partnership we've looked at like I said crew footwear, microgravity, heat shielding, earth observation and radiation um, and the website that you can go to to, to learn all about these lessons is aka.ms slash 20 years in space. And don't worry, we're going to go check out that website here in just a minute. First thing I want to talk to you about is AstroSox. Um, AstroSox is this idea uh, based off the fact that crew members on the International Space Station have pressure on the tops of their feet that they don't normally have. Normally on the Earth, we get calluses on the bottoms of our feet, but the astronauts... Uh, will actually get pressure on the tops of their feet. And we'll talk about that in a moment, but I wanna show you what the students are doing when they're building this lesson. Um, they're working in groups, they're collaborative, uh, they're building these pressure sensors and applying them to the tops of their, of their classmates' feet. And then they're applying pressure to see where the data is, uh, what, the, what the data shows, right? And then they can build something that can mitigate that pressure. Uh, and of course, they're trying to simulate what it would be like for an astronaut in microgravity. And we're actually going to have an astronaut in microgravity give us a quick demonstration of this. Um, this is astronaut Jessica Meir, who recently did an uh, education downlink where she discussed um, what it's like to work on a space station, doing the con uh, conducting the scientific research that they do. And you'll notice right here, you can see that there's pressure on the top of her foot. And that's what she has to do to keep herself in place. And so we can develop some sort of mitigation tool uh, that can help an astronaut with that, um, then, then that's a really great contribution. So that's what we're trying to have students do and have them think through the engineering design process that way. I wanna talk a little bit about heat shielding. Um, this is a middle school and high school lesson. Basically the two different lessons, you know, one for each uh, grade level, grade uh, uh, range. And then the middle school lesson, they're going to be testing different heat shields, different materials. Um, and then in high school, they're gonna be exploring adiabatic compression and ideal gas law. So quick example again here, you, the students might have uh, been given a block of instruction about heat capacity and melting point, and then they can make predictions on which materials would work best. And then they're actually going to build the setup with a uh, hair dryer that's going to test for two minutes um, an exterior, exterior temperature sensor and an interior temperature sensor, and you're going to see the, the discrepancy between those. The, the, some materials are going to be really good at, uh, at protecting the crew or the interior temperature sensor, and some uh, materials may not be as, as effective. And so when we finally go open our Excel spreadsheet and we take a look at what's happening, um, we'll see that um, you know, some of these materials worked well and some didn't. And so you'll see right here, you would have two different um, or three different materials and they would be comparing those. 
So now what we're going to talk about today's lesson, right? We're going to talk about the middle school radiation electromagnetic spectrum lesson. And so we're going to be building this right here, which is the spectrometer. There it is. And now it's mine is a little bit different than what is in the instructions. Um, I'll kind of go walk with you through how I made mine a little bit different, but let's go step by step and learn how to build one of these. All right, I got a little pre-recorded um, video here for you of, of what I did. And you'll see on the right, we have our Arduino. Now that's really important because that microcontroller um, is basically going to be taking in the data that we collect and it's gonna be sending it to Excel. And we'll show you how to set that up in a moment. But we've got our LED lights here. We've got, um, uh, we've got a UV, we've got red, green, blue, and then on the bottom here, this one is actually an infrared sensor. Um, and so we've got our resistors set up and this is a mini breadboard, right? So we need to keep these all in sequence. So what did I do? I just put copper tape um, right there to kind of connect that circuit, if you will. Um, and so you'll see, we'll kind of go through this, for the, you know, for the sake of time, I kind of jump through, but you'll see you've got mail to mail jumper wires that you'll be connecting from the Arduino to the breadboard. And you're probably thinking, okay, well, I don't have a lot of experience in this. This is kind of daunting, and I'm not sure if my students or even me feel, would feel comfortable doing this. Well, I can tell you I was in the same boat. Um, when I was a teacher, I, I taught biology, taught a lot of life science. I didn't really know if this was something that I felt comfortable, confident doing. But these instructions really outlined every step you need to take. Um, and basically, all we're doing right now is we're connecting the jumper wires to each LED, and it's a appropriate uh, port and the Arduino and eventually we'll have a complete setup uh, of our of our spectrometer and I kind of color coded it too green goes to green red goes to red uh, blue goes to blue you know you can do that if you want kind of helps um, uh, you kind of keep track of it all but we're not quite done once we finish this build of our spectrometer I mentioned that the microcontroller is vital to collecting this data well what we have to do is we have to send it to Excel, right? We have to send it to our computer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this, uh, we're gonna use this USB cord and it's gonna get us there. So that's the one end that fits right into the Arduino. And then you'll see the other end here, which looks like your kind of your classic USB. Um, and that's gonna go into your laptop or your you know PC device, whatever you're using. So we are all set up and ready to go. So I'm going to back out of this and we're going to get started. Here we go. So um, we're going to open up the Arduino code, which again, this is all on the website that you can just download for free. Easy, easy. Um, not a lot of work on your end. So we downloaded it off the website. It's all here. Basically what we're doing is we're telling the Arduino what we need it to do. We want it to be a spectrometer. We want it to collect visible light and UV and infrared. And so we're gonna go check tools, make sure everything's set up correctly. I have a Genuino Uno. You might have something different. Make sure that you click the correct one. Um, so that's good to go. And then um, I like to click it just to, just to make sure that it works. And then we go to Comport, make sure that it's good to go. Now you're gonna to go to this forward uh, right pointing arrow and you're gonna click Upload. And right here, we're compiling the sketch. We are telling the Arduino what we want it to do. Um, and we're uploading, we're uploading, and then we are done. Perfect. So I'm just going to minimize this. And now I'm going to open up the Radiation Excel file. And this, again, of course, is already built and prepared for you on the website. You just download it, and it looks like this. But here's how you make it come to life. You make it come to life by opening up data streamer, which is an add-in that the instructions will tell you how to add in. Uh, just real easy step-by-step. -step. You'll connect the device. Good to go. And then we'll hit start data. Boom. So now we're collecting real data right now. We're collecting infrared, visible light, uh, and UV. Now we don't have a whole lot of UV light right now, but you all are in luck because I have Mace Windu's lightsaber. Not really, this is just a UV light. And so I am going to shine this on my spectrometer. And what do you see about the UV? Now, a lot of them are actually going up, but specifically the UV light. 
is being collected and shown here. And this is really exciting for students because when you, you know, you can use the UV flashlight in your classroom or whatever you want. You can go outside and, you know, let the sunlight um, come in. There's obviously there's UV light from the sun. And so when students build this and they realize, wow, I just built something and now I'm collecting data. That's a really, really exciting thing. And so I think um, if you're worried that your students might not have the confidence to do this, this will build confidence in, in them when they're, when they're um, you know, maybe you want to get them kind of to a point where they can start doing robotics, doing other types of, uh, of coding. This is a, a really, really good starting ground, a starting point. So I highly recommend it. And of course, there's different uh, trials you can do and you can, and you can test different things as you go along. Um, but it's a great conversation if you really wanted to talk about um, radiation and electromagnetic spectrum. You know, this is a really, really great point to start that conversation. Uh, so this has been a short, brief intro. Um, I want to, before we go, I want to share with you the website, right? So if you, if you go here to aks.ms, or excuse me, aka.ms slash 20 years in space, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll check out all the different lessons here. You'll click on it and then everything's right here. Your build instructions, your Excel workbook, your materials list, your board code, everything you need is right here. Check it out. Um, and it's relatively inexpensive as well. Um, so it's not something that's going to cost uh, a, you an arm and a leg. Um, and you can, of course, adapt it. You know, you, as educators, you know that uh, you can tweak and, and adapt lessons to fit your students' needs the best. So um, I highly recommend these lessons. Um, like I said, there's eight of them. You can kind of pick and choose which one works best for you in your classroom. Um, I really, really hope this has been helpful. And if you have questions at all, I wanna share this last part with you. If you have questions, here's the website once again, but you can reach out to me, matthew.e.wallace at nasa.gov. I'd be happy to be a resource for you. Uh, someone at NASA and STEM engagement who can supply you with the resources that you need to be successful. I can put you in touch with the folks at Microsoft um, who work on this every day and who have customer support. Um, but Anything I can do to be of, service to you, be of service to you, I would love to do it. I want to say thank you so much for joining us today, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. And without further ado, I'm going to stop my sharing my screen and say good day. Bye-bye.